Well, good morning. Good morning. We welcome you here in the sanctuary and online as we gather together as God's people to worship our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. A few things before we continue to enter into worship. If you look at the back of your bulletin concerning uh, Bread and Bowl, it is our turn to host that this week. Uh, if you would like to help out with that, please give Nancy Wolverton a call or the church office. As well as uh, with VBS coming up, if you would like to participate in that. Also, or looking for some volunteers, if you're interested in helping to mow around the church, let Phil McClure or Randy Thompson be aware. Also then, uh, we have communion kits with a little special flavor added to it. First of all, if you did not receive a communion kit, but would like one, please raise your hand at this time. Is there anybody who does not have a communion kit and yet would like one? Okay, looks like we're taken care of. Um, a special bonus feature today, you have your option. Um, I know that uh, we have been just in, since we've been uh, re-serving, uh, redoing uh, in our serving of communion, which has been, gosh, when has that been? I think July. Um, we have just had the absolute delight with this yummy, tasty grape juice that we have with our little communion kits. We're still stuck with that, but um, at our lock-in of our confirmands this last Friday night, which uh, for a number of our, our recent classes, I mean, they've wanted to go to bed like at midnight, 1230 or so forth. I typically put 130 as uh, a limit and uh, we were up to like 330 or so. <laughs> on that and then we got up around 6 30 20 to 7 so our kids were just really raring to go at 3 30. Uh, i think by 4 in the morning they actually settled down and some of them were really cranky when they got up in the morning <laughs> but uh one of the things that we've been doing a recent uh, tradition probably i don't know the last maybe five years or so is uh, kelly thompson uh, will come in and will be in the church kitchen and we'll lead the kids in baking communion bread. Uh, this is a flat honey bread. Uh, the kids have a great time with it. It's always a, a lot of fun. So you have in your communion kit, uh, we took necessary precautions and all that. So if you want, when we have communion today and for the bread, if you don't wanna have the wafer, don't partake of the wafer, you can have the little piece of bread there instead. It is totally your choice. If you need a little extra forgiveness, uh, from the last time that you had uh, communion, you can take both the bread and the wafer. I mean, we're not going to single you out in the front of everybody as to who's doing both, but uh, it is there for you. Uh, the sacrament is very meaningful and it is truly a tremendous gift uh, that our God grants to us. Also, uh, just as an awareness, uh, each of our confirmands, this has been a longstanding tradition also, uh, thanks to Thrivent, we get a, a cross uh, for our confirmands, which can be put up on the wall. I have one in my office as well. Those are always really, really cool. And then uh, this goes back to um, the Etzler family. Uh, Marilyn Etzler uh, started this tradition after her husband Gerard passed away about a shepherd looks at Psalm 23 by Philip Keller. This is a, a classic. It gets into the understanding of what does a shepherd do? What are the responsibilities, the tools that a shepherd uses? So when it, it just provides a lot of great meaning and understanding and insight with the 23rd Psalm. So each of our confirmands uh, receives those and is truly, truly a gift. So we thank uh, the Etzler family for that tradition. And now the moment that you've been long waiting for, we're gonna have an introduction of our confirmands. Uh, it's a little different this year because we did not have confirmation last year due to all things COVID. And so the, it's not just the class of 2021, but the class of 2020 is gonna be confirmed. Now, uh, last year's class consisted of three boys. Only one of the three could be here today. The other two, we will go with the rite of confirmation uh, later on once uh, school is out. So we'll have all three boys uh, confirmed and we will get their group photo later on as well. But for last year's class of 2020 then, so that we at least get one of our three uh, confirmed today is Nick Evans. Come on down, Nick. And the price is right because Jesus already paid for it on the cross and the empty tomb. Uh, Nick is the son of Bill and Jackie Evans. Grandparents are Jim and Kathy Sowers. 
Nick attends uh, Lincoln View Middle School. Well, it's now high school. You're in high school because I'm thinking last year, this is this year. Hobbies include baseball, golf, fishing, 4-H, and Boy Scouts. Nick's Bible verse is from Psalm 30, verse 5. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Abigail Steck Schulte is the daughter of Jason and Stephanie Steck Schulte, the granddaughter of Gary and Rose Steck Schulte, Kathy and Bob Ricker, and Steve Bauman. And she attends middle school. We are now starting the class of 2021 this year. Attends Fort Jennings Middle School. Her hobbies are dance, cheer, flying, reading. Uh, she, both parents do have pilot license. And I don't know if that's one of your, is that one of your endeavors as well as to get your own license? So it runs in the family, pretty exciting stuff. When uh, not everyone has a daddy daughter date where they go up in an airplane and, <laughs> and go, out to, uh, go out and get an ice cream cone, something like that. So really cool. Philippians 4, 6 is Abby's Bible verse. Don't worry about anything, but instead pray about everything. Bennett Michael Kill. Ben? His parents are Mike and Sarah Kill. Grandparents are Marge and Dave Schindler and Robin and Dan Kill. Bennett attends uh, Lincoln View Middle School. His hobbies include basketball, cross country, 4-H, and helping my dad around the farm. And Ben's uh, Bible verse is John 14, verse 6. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Dakota Neuheiser. There she is. Dakota is the daughter of Adam and Crystal Nyheiser. Her grandparents are Jerry and Carolyn Nyheiser and Bill and Jean Clark. She attends Crestview Middle School. Her hobbies and interests include dance, gymnastic, and 4-H. And her Bible verses, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still, Exodus 14, 14. Elizabeth Johnson. Elizabeth is the daughter of Craig and Paula Johnson. Her grandparents, um, include Leilani Daly and Pam and Keith and I'm sorry I should have reviewed that with you hmm yes your grandpa Stephen is that it Stephen yes all right um you will make a good doctor someday with your handwriting you really will <laughs> but I'm bum all right Elizabeth attends Lincoln View Middle School. Her hobbies and activities include cheer, cross country, track, art, reading, band, and swimming. And Elizabeth's Bible verse is Genesis 19, 26. But Lot's wife behind him, she became a pillar of salt. And then, and definitely, last but not least, Mr. Renson Spear. Renson, there he is. Renson is the son of Shannon and Bobby Spear, uh, grandparents John and Marlene Friend. He goes to Van Wert Middle School. Renson's hobbies include fishing, wrestling, baseball, football, and crying in the rain. <laughs> it has been a very interesting year with this confirmation class, to say the least. Renson's Bible verse is John chapter 10, verse 11, I am the good shepherd. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is your class for 2020 and 2021. Let us give them a warm St. Mark's welcome. I invite you please to turn to hymn 452 as we join together in singing verses 1, 3, and 5. Awake, O sleeper, rise from death. Please stand. Yeah. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With you. Let us pray. God, you give us your Son as the vine, apart from we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the congregation to turn to page 234. Uh, Stephanie, we're going to change the order up a bit here. I did not tell you that, sorry. Um, so I invite you to turn to page 234. Compromands, please come forward. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word and baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, answer, I renounce them. And people of God, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. I invite the congregation to turn to page 230, 230, and please stand and face the baptismal font. Page 230. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Written 500 years ago, Martin Luther's flood prayer, a way to help us understand how God has used and continues to use water to form a new creation and a new people. We give you thanks, O God. From the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word, you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. And through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death, and raised us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life, to you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord and the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I invite the children of the congregation, our young ones, to please gather around the baptismal font at this time. Now, what for some people... Um, they experience this early on in life for others. It's later in life. In baptism. This is an adoption process that God has given to us to grant us his forgiveness and new life and salvation to become members of his forever family. Okay? Now, 
our bodies are, are what, about 70% water. The Earth's surface is about 70% water. Water is a very much a part of who we are in the world in which we live. So it's no surprise that God uses water to communicate his love and his grace to us. So for Dakota, this is a very special moment that is going to be happening in her life. Okay, so watch closely. All righty. Okay. Boys, if you could hold that, please. Dakota, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Dakota with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Dakota, child of God, You've been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Dakota, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. Everyone, please be seated. We're on page 236, 236. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper. To proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed. To serve all people following the example of Jesus. And to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, answer in turn. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? If so, answer we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you gave us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up and rinse in the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and and forever. Stir up in Elizabeth the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Stir up in Dakota the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Stir up and bend at the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Stir up and Abigail, the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. 
Stir up and nick the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Let us rejoice with these sisters and brothers in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God Proclaim the good news to all the world. Please stand. Face the congregation. Join together. Sisters and brothers in Christ, it is truly an honor and privilege to introduce to you your newly confirmed Sisters and Brothers in Christ class of 2020 and 2021. People of God at St. Mark's, let us give them a warm St. Mark's congratulation and welcome. And you will have the opportunity to greet our compromands immediately following the service, as well as uh, for picture taking as well. Thank you so much. Nick, if you please. And it is now time for Noah's Park Children's Church. chapter 2, verses 25 through 28. Honor the Lord. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall, shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. And our third reading is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 12, and verse 19. God is love. Beloved, let us love one another, because, God, er, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we are loved, not that we loved God, 
but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. We love because he first loved us. Please stand. of the Holy Gospel for you, God's people, as it is written according to the Gospel of St. John, the 15th chapter. Jesus, the true vine. Jesus says of himself, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. And every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. And those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Word of God, word of life. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Well, grace be on you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we continue our sermon series, Empty Tomb, Abundant Life, we are going through our pilgrimage through the season of Easter. Because Easter is not just one day out of the year and one day for our life. But Easter is every day for us to embrace and to celebrate. The church year has a special focus on Easter, which is the conclusion of, of Holy Week and the season of Easter leading up to Pentecost, which is the birth of the church. And this year it's the last Sunday of May. So during this journey, we are gaining a deeper understanding of what does it mean that the resurrection of Jesus, that Christ is not dead, but he is alive, he is risen. And how does that impact us in our day-to-day -day living? Because our faith is not just about after you die. Our faith is also about what do you do in the meantime, before that? And how does that impact us from morning, noon, and night. So one of the ways in which the resurrection of Jesus has such a great impact and influence on us is when it comes to the issue of love. When you go to a wedding, and so often you will hear the reading from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, and it's the 13th chapter, love is patient, love is kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or arrogant or rude. Love believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And it concludes with faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. From Genesis to Revelation, from beginning to end and all the in-between, this is a common theme, that God is love. And that we are called to love God and to love one another and to love ourselves. And we love only because God first loved us. And the type of love that we're talking about is not romantic or, or sugary, mushy kind of love, but sacrificial, gut-honoring, God-wrenching kind of love in which we're willing to lay it all on the line 
for our God, for those whom we do love, perhaps even for those who we don't even know their name. So we have explored different ways in which love speaks to us and that we offer love. Author Gary Chapman has uh, popularized this by saying there's really five love languages and that each of us has one or two primary ways in which we offer love and receive love. And we have looked at two of those. We're going to look at a third one today. The first two is words of affirmation. For some of you who are here, it is words that you communicate love and that you receive love. That words are powerful. And how they build up, how they affirm, how they encourage, how it speaks to you and how it speaks to another person. So if words are your primary love language, then for you, words speak louder than actions. But if acts of service is your primary love language, then for you, doing for others is what is paramount and actions speak louder than words. Today, we're going to look at the great gift of time. And maybe for some of you, this is just going to be like, this doesn't make any sense to me. And for others, you're going to be going, oh, Pastor, you are preaching my love language. Because this is my primary way of showing and receiving love. The offering of our time. The giving of your undivided attention, whether it's 20 minutes, 3 hours, whatever, of another person because you understand that when you offer your time to someone else that is a great way of expressing your love you're not just doing for somebody you're doing with this another person when you think about some of your most precious commodities in life what comes to mind maybe it's relationships family perhaps it's food clothing a roof over your head finances Water, also I would argue, one of our absolute most priceless commodities is time. Because your time and my time are valuable. A lot of us don't have a lot of extra wiggle room time. We have very packed schedules. And so time is one of your most priceless commodities. Did you know and you probably don't, and you probably don't care either, but I'm saying it anyways, there are 31,556,926 seconds in a year. Aren't you further edified by knowing that? When you, next time you go to some gathering, some party, you can say to a person, hey, did you know there's over 31,556,000 seconds in a year? And they will be so impressed, they will just keep walking on. And you're all standing there going, I don't know why they don't find this interesting. By the time you turn 70, you will have, your heart will have beat two and a half billion times, more than 100,000 times per day. And keep that in mind about heart health because there might be some correlation with this next fact and that is, as we talk about time, McDonald's sells approximately 375 burgers every five seconds. How encouraging that is, I'm not sure. For some of you who enjoy board games, the longest board game marathon on record, this was set in 2017, 80 hours. Can you imagine playing a board game for three days straight? Now, if you sleep an average of eight hours per night, you will sleep about one third of your life. So if you sleep one third of your life, it begs the question, what do you do with the other two thirds of your life? Henry David Thoreau said it this way, it's not enough to be busy. The question is, what are we busy about? Or King David proclaimed it this way in Psalm 90. Teach us to number our days aright, O Lord, so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Here's the thing about time. It's free, but it's priceless. You can't own it, but you can use it. You can't keep it, but you can spend it. And once you've lost it, you can never get it back. 
for some of you, time. Time. Time is your most bestest, profound way of expressing and receiving love. In our reading today that we heard from Stephanie, we see the story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. And here we have this fellow who is a high-ranking official in Ethiopia. And he's in the chariot, and he's reading from the prophet Isaiah. Now, I don't know about you, but being in a cha driving a chariot and reading the Bible at the same time, I would think that would be designated in today's verbiage as distracted driving. This is what we see going on. This has been a human problem for 2,000 years. It's nothing new and recent. And the Spirit of God tells Philip, no, 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 I don't want you going that way. You go over here, because there's a guy in a chariot that you need to talk to. So the Spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. Spend some time with him, Philip. And through the offering of your time, you will understand God's love for him. So Philip runs up and he asks, and isn't this a great way when you are building relationships and spending time with people you really care about, asking good questions. When you see that word question, you see the word quest within it. Because when you ask questions, it's taking you on a quest, a pilgrimage, a journey with that other person as you're devoting and offering and giving your time. Philip asks, do you understand what you are reading? And the eunuch's going, I really don't know. Is this talking about the author or someone else? So the eunuch invites Philip to get into the chariot and sit beside him. And this conversation ensues over the reading from Isaiah 53. In this portion from the prophet Isaiah, we hear him saying about who we as apprentices of Jesus think it's referring to our Lord. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. Like a lamb silent before its shearer, so it does not open his mouth and his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And so Philip begins to open up to this eunuch, the good news that is in Jesus about the reconciliation of all things, both now and eternally. And retelling the story of what we have just come through of Holy Week and Easter. That your God and Savior, or maybe he isn't yet, but you're still pondering for him to be that. This one who we call Jesus of Nazareth, who we understand to be God in the human flesh, loved you so much and was willing to lay it all on the line that he allowed himself to be crucified for you and me and then resurrected on that day that we call Easter. And the eunuch hearing about this asked Philip, what does prevent me from being baptized? And he went down into the water and Philip baptized him. And all this, an expression of love, the offering of his time for another person. Time may or may not be your primary love language. Time is something you offer with another person. To give your focused and undivided attention. To be together and to have conversation with one another. Or just to even sit in silence and have a ministry of presence. We spend time with the Lord, we spend time with others, we spend time with those whom we love and those perhaps who we don't quite even know yet as we see with Philip and the eunuch. But they did get to know each other. Jesus said it this way, I am the vine and you are the branches. And those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. With the high winds that we've had over these last few weeks, you will see branches that have broken off from trees and the leaves on them, the buds on them, over a number of days, they begin to die because they are separated from the tree. And so is our life with our Lord. 
to abide in Christ and Christ abiding in you. Together with that connection, you bear much fruit. Paul will say in the book of Galatians, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love. And out of that comes joy and peace and patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, and self-control. We love, John writes, because God first loved us as we see in the Christ event of Christmas and his three-year ministry and Good Friday and Easter Sunday. And John continues, no one has ever seen God. And if we love one another, God lives in us. We have folks in our community and in our world who don't have a clue who our God is. And quite honestly, can you blame them? I mean, the one who we believe in, the one who we claim to follow, the one that we are learning, how is it that we are to live life when we are apprentices in learning that trade? But you can't see him. And we have a lot of folks who say seeing is believing. So how is it that people can come to a faith in a God that they cannot see? Through you and me. Because you and I are the hands and the feet and the voice and the heart of Jesus. No one has ever seen God. The way in which you share your love to other people, whether it's through words of affirmation, acts of service, giving up your time, or as we will see over the next two Sundays, through gifts or through physical touch, that is how people can come to know who this God is. Because ultimately, God is love. So, confirmands, you are already confirmed. The pressure's off. You don't have to worry about, oh, what's pastor going to ask us now? Which I'm not going to ask you to remember, have anything quoted, memorized, all that. But I want you to think something. I want you to think about something. And that is, at this point in your life, you now have an eighth grade education in your faith. So where do you take it from here? I'm not talking about just through high school. But I'm talking about in your 20s. And then when you get really old and turn 30, oh my gosh, that's older than dirt. You realize your parents are over 30? Do you know that? Yeah. The wheel was invented by the time they were born. I kid you not. But what are you going to do with your faith in your 20s, in your 30s, in your 40s? You look out here for some people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. That is a lot of life to live. So what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with your time? With what you have already lived until the day in which you cross the threshold into the kingdom of heaven? It is my hope and prayer that each of you is given the gift of a long, healthy, meaningful, significant life. What you do with that, it's up to you. Part of the thing about confirmation is you now get to stand on your own two feet. You are young men and women. You have a long ways to go yet. But you've also come a long ways. But this is something that I want to share with you, and that is this. That when you die, die with memories, not dreams. Die with memories, not dreams. We can have lots of hopes and dreams. You can think about what you want your life to become. You can think about where you want your life to be. It's one thing to just, yeah, that's a great idea. Another thing to do something about it. If you die with memories, that means that you have stepped up to the plate 
and you have fulfilled the goals, or you have at least attempted to fulfill the goals and hopes and dreams of your life. And even more importantly, attempting to fulfill what you believe God's calling is for your life. Because that is what truly matters. But if you die with just dreams, it means that you just have had all these wonderful, fabulous, and fantastic ideas and you haven't done a blasted thing about it. So my encouragement to you is this. This last year with all things COVID, it has really upset the apple cart in your world. School has been really different over this past year. You've seen uh, your teachers, you've seen uh, your folks, you've seen other adults. They've been stressed out. They've been worried. Maybe their temper has been a little short on some things. Folks have been upset about stuff. It has affected work, it has affected finances, it has affected families, it's put pressure on marriages. It's not been an easy year. And so we need to hit the pause button for a moment. And in the midst of that kind of world and environment that isn't going away, but is continuing to become faster and change more rapidly all the time, Knowing that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Where does your faith take you in the midst of all that? To understand that Jesus just gives us the simple call of love the Lord your God. With all of your heart, with all of your soul and mind, and with all of your strength. And then to love others as you love yourself. It's not always easy to love others. You have already learned that in school and in your young lives. It's not always easy to love yourself either. And yet this is just simply what, what the Lord is asking of us to do as apprentices of him. To love this one who loves you so much that he gave up his life for you. No greater love can we experience and see than that. And then he's saying, and in addition to that, love those people who are around you. Yeah, that means the ones who can be unlovable and unloving. Because guess what? You have your moments in which you're not exactly the most loving or lovable person either. And yet most of the time you are loving and you are lovable, but each and every one of us has our moments. And then to see, what does it take to love myself? Okay, and I really mean that guys. In a world in which um, mental health and emotional health has really taken a nosedive over this last year, to know that God has created you, that God loves you, and that you matter to God, and that God don't make no junk, and that you are one of a kind, priceless in his eyes, and he has a great calling for your life. But it's just to know, to discover what is God's purpose for you. And to not throw away that opportunity but to seek what God's heartfelt desire is for your life and to love yourself in the midst of that. To know that you are precious and priceless, not perfect, because no one is, but you are a blessed and beloved child of God and a member of his forever family. So I implore you, I challenge you, I invite you, and quite honestly, I'm begging you. And rarely do I beg, because that's not part of my repertoire, but I am laying it out to you now. Die with memories and not dreams. Begin to discern what God's desire is for your life. 
and with the talents and skills and gifts and blessing and ability that each and every one of you have. Figure out what your passions are in life, what your abilities are in life, the direction that God is calling you in your life. And whatever that is, may you glorify God in what you do. And by all means, have fun along the way. Because each of you knows how to have a good time and fun in your own particular way. Our lock-in, for example, <laughs> that we had just a few nights ago. You know, it was, it was a delight to see some of you just finally let your hair down and, and, and just be the person that I know you are. And to really, really, really just, just to cut loose and, and to enjoy. And we had a lot of fun, and it was a great time. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. Love God. Love others. Oh, by all means, love yourself. Because you are a gift from God. Each of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please turn with me to hymn 433 and invite you to stand at this time as we rejoice and sing together to God's glory. Please be seated.
Please turn with me to page 105 in the front of your hymnals. With the whole church, let us confess our resurrection faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Page 105, please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and for all of God's creation. Risen Jesus, you are the vine, we are the branches, and you reveal what true love is. We intercede and pray on behalf of Pauline Welding. Ted Adams, Jan Hoblett, Nancy Gardner, and Scott Etkin, Pat Leland, Kenny Doner, Bev Cordy, Jeff Doner, and Linda Sink, for Hippie Waffle Horse, and the family and friends of Pat Baldwin, Lori Kearns, and Kelly Burns, for our confirmands this morning, Lord. We ask for your discernment, for your guidance, and for your grace. For Nick, for Elizabeth, for Renson, Abby, Dakota, and Bennett. Help us, Lord, to do what you are blessing as apprentices of Jesus, to bring healing to this land and throughout your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please remain where you are, but extend God's peace to those who are around you. Please be seated. I invite you to turn to page 107 in the front portion of your hymnals and also simultaneously uh, to get out your communion kits as we prepare to celebrate the sacrament. A reminder that our offering boxes are as you exit uh, the sanctuary. For you who are watching live stream, if you wish to give to the ongoing 157-year ministry of our congregation, of this congregation, of being the hands and feet of Jesus. We invite you to go to stmarchlutheranvw.com, our website, or text 419-273-9947. Page 107, 107 in the front of your hymnals. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. To your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We turn to page 109. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. 
Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Turn with me, please, to page 112. Let us pray together the prayer which our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ, given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you unto eternal life. Amen. Please stand. Bless and beloved people of God and members of his forever family, God has shown you what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God? So may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord look upon you with his favor grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and share the good news. Thanks be to God. We join together in singing hymn 449, verses 1 and 4. We know that Christ is raised.